This story is Honest Abe. Paintings by Micaiah Zealous and words by Edith Coonhart. Honest Abe, paintings by Micaiah Zealous and words by Edith Coonhart. Abraham Lincoln was born in Kentucky in a log cabin. His parents, Thomas and Nancy Lincoln, were poor. His father worked hard as a carpenter and farmer, and his mother helped him in the fields. Neither his mother nor his father could read or write. Abraham had an older sister named Sarah. When he was old enough to go to school, he and Sarah walked two miles to the one-room schoolhouse. Children from every grade sat in the same room. All the schooling Abraham Lincoln ever had added up to one year. But he was eager to learn and taught himself. Two years later, Abraham's mother died. Abraham played with his cousin Dennis, who had come to live with them, but nothing was the same. Another year went by, and Thomas Lincoln left Abraham and Sarah and Dennis alone in the cabin and went back to Kentucky. Abraham was growing strong and tall. His father hired him out to other farmers for 25 cents a day. He chopped down trees for firewood and split logs to make rail fences. He was a very good worker. Sometimes he jumped up on a tree stump and told funny stories and jokes. People love listening to him. Abraham almost always had a book in his pocket or in his hand. He even carried a book with him when he plowed the fields. He would read while the horse was resting at the end of a corn row. When he was 19 years old, Abraham was 6 feet 4 inches tall. He weighed more than 200 pounds and was a powerful wrestler and a swift runner. Abraham worked on a flatboat on the Mississippi River. Flatboats carried hogs and corn to market. The boat traveled down the river to New Orleans. There, Abraham saw slaves. These black people did not get paid for the work they did. White people owned them and, he, and could sell them. Abraham thought this was wrong. Soon after Abraham got back from New Orleans, Thomas Lincoln moved his family to Illinois, and soon after that, Abraham left, left home. He moved to New Salem, a small town in Illinois, where he worked in a store. After a, after a white people began to come to the store just to hear, after a while, people came to the store just to hear Abraham tell stories. People called him Abe or Honest Abe. Once a woman paid him six and a quarter cents too much. He walked three miles to find her and pay her back. He had many jobs in New Salem. He was a postmaster, delivered mail, and surveyed land. He wore a tall silk hat in which he kept bills, notes, and legal papers. Sometimes when he took off his hat, the papers would fall on the ground. Abe's office was in Springfield, but he also rode to small towns far out on the prairie to help decide legal cases. He made many friends. He ran for Congress and was elected. 
A few years later, Abe decided to run for the United States Senate. He ran against Stephen A. Douglas. Douglas believed that slavery should continue. Abraham believed that slavery should end. Abraham and Douglas traveled all over Illinois debating each other. When the people voted, Douglas won, but the debates made Lincoln famous. Lincoln and, and Douglas ran against each other each other again in two years. This time, the contest was for the presidency of the United States, and Lincoln won. Abe, Mary, and their three sons moved to the White House in Washington, D.C. The boys loved the old house. They played in the attic, rode their pony on the land, and chased their goats through the halls. Two weeks after Abraham became president, the Civil War started. It was a war between the people who lived in the northern states, most of whom believed slavery should end, and the people who lived in the southern states, most of whom believed slavery should continue. Almost two years passed. Thousands of soldiers had been killed in the war, and the South seemed to be winning. In addition, Willie, the president's 12-year-old son, died. It was at this difficult time that Lincoln wrote the Emanci Emancipation Proclamation. This was a milestone on the road to, in, in, to the final end of slavery. Two years later, the 13th Amendment to the Constitution outlawed slavery in the United States forever. The war continued. A terrible battle took place in a little town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Thousands of soldiers were killed there. Five years, five months later, President Lincoln went to the battlefield to dedicate a cemetery to those who had died. The speech he made, known as the Gettysburg Address, lasted only about two minutes, but remains one of the most famous speeches in American history. He said that no one that no one would ever forget the brave men who had died there and that the government and that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth uh oh I'm missing a page oh here we go the war ended after more than four years. I've never been so happy in my life, the president said. Five days later, President and Mrs. Lincoln went to the theater. As they watched the play, a man who was furious at the president for freeing the slaves crept up behind him and shot him in the head. The bullet went into his brain. President Lincoln remained unconscious through the night. In the morning, he died. His body was in a coffin in the White House, and many people cried. A train took President Lincoln's body on the long trip back to Illinois. Thousands of people stood by the tracks to say goodbye. He was given a funeral in 10 different cities along the way. Finally, the train reached Springfield, where he was buried. Honest Abe was home. 